another week, another fancy Gen AI term, agentic rag. In today's video, we are going to understand what is agentic rag, do we really need it and what are the value proposition of it. Then we are going to learn some of the real world use cases of agentic rag and we are going to see one of that use case in action. I'm going to share all the artifacts in my GitHub so you can reproduce the same use case. And only thing I ask in return is, please like and subscribe. All right, let's get started. So before we jump into agentic rag, let's take a look at both of these terms separately. So what is the value proposition of rag? Big value proposition of rag is, you will have bunch of local databases and your documents for your company projects and then you will feed them to an embedding model and that will convert all this company information into vectors. So when you the customer or an employee of the company is doing a project and ask a question to the agentic application, the application can go search in this vector database to get additional information which is not present in the other large language model. So what is the critical part of RAG? The critical part of the RAG is basically this vector database where you are feeding all the company documents and information to be stored as vectors. So what are the value proposition of RAG? It augments the large language model answers with company data because it is not possible to keep on training your large language model every day. Right? So RAG makes it more cost effective as well as the answers become more accurate. And also it allows you to easily ingest diverse data. Not only databases, you can literally feed any documents, pictures, PDFs to this embedding model and that will convert them to vectors which can be searched. And one thing to keep in mind, lot of folks confuse between this LLM with the other LLM. So this LLM is just an embedding LLM whose sole task is to convert these informations into vectors. Some examples could be Amazon Titan embedding version 2, version 1.4, etc. Whereas this LLM is the traditional LLM that you know and use such as Claude 3.7, Claude 4, etc. which is trained on vast amount of data. Okay, so at this point, we understand the critical part of RAG as well as the value proposition. Let's switch gear to the value proposition of agent. So with agent, you will ask a question to the agentic app such as, hey, identify issues in my AWS applications and fix them. And the agent will have access to different tools. And the agent first start perhaps with, hey, what is the application that have issues? Check the logs. Then it gets the information. Then it will invoke the same tool or a different tool saying, oh, find out exactly why the issue is happening in this application. Then it found out. And then using another tool, it will say, aha, I found the issue, fix this. And perhaps it will validate it. And then the issue will be fixed. So as you could see, this is back and forth. And you do not have to codify this back and forth. It's autonomous, right? So in, for some issues, this agent may go to tool four times. Like, okay, maybe uh, this is a Kubernetes cluster. Let me see if I have access. Oh, I do not have access. Then the control goes back to the agent. Then the agent says, ah, I see there is a cube config file. Let me check that and assume access. And then the flow goes back. Then the agent may say, oh, let me query kubectl get pods dash a. Oh, I see a problematic pod, right? And then it will see, oh, let me check the pod logs. This is failing because of this. Let me fix it. So depending on the issue, the agent is autonomously determining what tool to call and how to fix it. And at the end of this back and forth, the task will be complete, the issue will be fixed. That is literally the value proposition of agent. This autonomous feedback loop till task completion and it autonomously and automatically can choose different tools at its disposal. This is how agents are different than conditional workflows. A lot of you asked me, so Raj, I can do this issue fixing with some sort of workflows like step function, which can check if the error is this, do this. But then you will create this huge conditional if else, which will be very rigid 
and if it encounters a new issue or a new step in between it will fail. Whereas with agentic AI this agent can autonomously and automatically call these tools as many times as it needs till the task is complete. So now we understand the value proposition of RAG and value proposition of agents. So what if we combine them and get the superpower of both these patterns. Consider an example where you the user are asking give me info on company upcoming product and then based on the existing products what should be the price of this new product. Now think about it. Maybe your LLM is trained on your existing company products but this LLM does not have information on a research product that you are updating every day. So those information could be in some documents, maybe doc or PDF, etc. And this is where we can combine the superpower of agent and rag. So these documents can be fed to an embedding model which can be stored in this vector database. And this vector database can be used by one of the tools that this agent has access to. Right? So in this case, the agent will see, huh, I do not have all the up-to-date information in this large language model. Let me call a tool which has access to this vector database, get all the information, and then I have information on the existing product from the LLM. Let me see what is the definition of the product, what are the details, specification, and what are the prices and sales information. And based on that, I will determine the price of this new product, which is in the research documents. And once it does it, the task is complete. And this is what is agentic RAG, because we are combining the superpowers of RAG as well as the agentic AI. So it, it has both the autonomous feedback loop till task completion, as well as access to company data outside of this large language model. Now that we understand what is agentic RAG, let's see this in action with a demo. So for this demo, I selected a subset of this use case. So let's imagine we have something on the research pipeline and that part is not in the large language model, right? So that part is not here, but that part is in document. And we are going to use the power of RAG along with agent to get all the information of company products, both the existing one and on research. All right, let's jump into the demo. Okay, let's imagine the company is Tesla and Tesla is working on this secret robot called Tesla Maximus. This robot in, is inspired by legendary Roman general and gladiator Maximus Decimus Meridius and this is how he looks. It comes with full Roman outfit. And it also has some specification, the model name, series, processor, mobility, the display, as well as some of the intelligence and capabilities. So this robot is trained on over 30,000 Roman historical texts, plays, etc. And this is my favorite feature. This robot is pre-installed with full Roman cookbook. Who doesn't love a good Italian dish? All right, so it has some more information. And this information is not available in the LLM. For our demo, we are using Claude 4.0. I'm implementing these agents using AWS Trends. AWS Trends is newly released agentic SDK, which makes creating agents interacting with LLMs and tools very easy. If you want to know how to set this up step by step, look at the other video that I did last week. Okay. And I'm going to share all the code so you can try it out yourself. This is the sample code. And as always, before you use these packages and everything, you do the pip install and all that stuff. I will put all that information in the GitHub. Ignore these green lines. They are commented so that I can show everything in one code. And in this AWS trend agent, by default, it has access to my bedrock cloud 4.0. How can it do it? Well, it's running in my Visual Studio code and I'm gonna run this in the terminal. And in this terminal, I have set up AWS configure. And using AWS configure, it has access to my AWS account where I have enabled Claude 4.0.
The strand agent also comes with some predefined tools which you do not have to code. In this case, I'm using current time and use AWS. This use AWS is pretty powerful. You can give it in natural language or plain English to go look up some service or knowledge base or S3 bucket and it will do it without you needing to do any coding. I'm asking this agent, what do you know about Tesla products? List the current product as well as research one. So at this point, there is no rag involved. I'm simply asking the large language model. All right, let's run this. So to run this, I'm simply going to type python strand underscore rag dot py. All right, okay. So let's see what it got. So uh, first it checked current time tool, which obviously doesn't have any information on Tesla. Then the LLM itself has knowledge on Tesla products because those are existing products. However, based on my knowledge, I can share what I know about Tesla's product as of my last update. All the cars, S, 3XY, Cybertruck, energy products, as well as the FSD and Tesla is also working on a robot called Optimus, right? But as you could see, this agent does not have any knowledge about the research products such as the new Maximus robot. Now we are going to feed this Tesla Maximus robot information into a vector database and implement agentic rag. I click create knowledge base with vector store in bedrock and then I just rename this to knowledge base research products, scroll down and I'm going to select custom here. This is the easiest way to upload document as well as same something to the knowledge base. Click next, click next again. I have to select the embedding model. I'm gonna select Titan text embedding two. I'm going to use Amazon open source serverless for the vector database and then click next. Click create knowledge base. It's gonna take a couple minutes. All right, our knowledge base is created. The vector database is ready. So now let's upload the document to this knowledge base. Going to click add documents, add documents directly. And I'm going to upload the document from my desktop. See how easy this is. You don't need to use any S3 bucket or anything. You can directly ingest any document to your knowledge base. All right, give a name and then let's click add. Okay, document ingestion is in progress. All right, successfully ingested the document, research product robot Maximus. So our vector database is all ready. Okay, let's come back to our strand agent. And to use the bedrock knowledge base, we use this tool called retrieve. Again, you don't have to code it. The strand agent comes with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out this line and uncomment this line where I added this new tool called retrieve. Now we have to put a system prompt, tell it to retrieve from the bedrock knowledge basis in our account. So I say, you are a RAG specialist, use the retrieve tool for queries. When using the retrieve tool, use all the knowledge bases in US OS 2 in my AWS account. This, I, I, I'm doing it this way to show the agentic loop feature, right? Where the agent has to go figure out what are the knowledge bases I have and then select the, select the one and then use it. If you want to make it a little bit faster, you can do it like this when using the retrieve tool. E -tool always use knowledge base ID this and region US West 2. You can specifically pass the knowledge base IDs to make it a little bit faster. Let's save this. So at this point, it has access to the rag as well. Let's rerun this. All right, see how it is doing? It is calling different tools automatically. First, it called the retrieve, and then it saw it needs the knowledge base ID. So then it called use underscore AWS. So then it, can, it is searching information using the knowledge base. Okay, then it's doing retrieve, retrieve. So see, it's going back and forth. All right, look at this. After the retrieval, based on my search on the knowledge base, I can provide the following information about Tesla product. Research products, Tesla Maximus, a humanoid AI robot concept with robot Roman themed feature. Then it gives all the information from the vector database. And then it says, 
Unfortun unfortunately, the knowledge base does not contain comprehensive information about Tesla's current vehicle lineup and energy product. Okay, then it went to the LLM information and then it also gave information about Model S, E, X, Y, energy products, etc. All right, if I go back to the PowerPoint, this is exactly what we accomplished. We understood the superpower of agent, superpower of RAG. Then we took a research paper, converted it into vector, saved it into a vector database. We created a strand agent. Now it can use both these vector database as well as information in the LLM so that you, the user, can get comprehensive information. If you want the latest cloud interview guide, including Gen AI interview questions and their answers, with average answers that most candidates give, and delightful answers that sets you apart and get you hired, go to cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. Again, cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.